being detected from the police. With no evidence, the police need to find witnesses. They interview other women working in Ipswich's red light area. One of them is fellow prostitute, Paula Clennell. Well, how old do you know, Tanya? Yeah, well enough. She knew on the streets. Yeah, Seemed nice enough, she had a cigarette before, you know. Pretty girl. When did you last see her? So about a week ago. Maybe two. Can you remember exactly what date that was? Or what day, time? I think it was about 12.30. One year, maybe. Would have been in October. Burlington Road area. Burlington Road is one of only a handful of streets that make up Ipswich's red light district. The area is constantly monitored by CCTV cameras. To try and spot Tanya the night she went missing, police trawl through a staggering 16,000 hours of footage. Their dedication pays off. Tanya spotted the night she went missing getting into a dark car. But the image isn't clear enough to get a match for the car's registration plate. The efforts to identify the killer leave the police frustrated. Then, the shattering news of another body. The motorist had reported finding what appeared to be the naked body of uh, a young female. A totally unexpected, um, totally unbelievable. Mind begins to race. What are we dealing with here? What's happening in Suffolk? The discovery of yet another body less than 48 hours after the start of the double murder inquiry horrifies David Stagg. After the body of Tanya Nicole had been found, Nobody really envisaged that this spree of murders would actually continue. And it came as a real shock to us when the third body was found. Not just because it was a third body, but the manner of deposition was entirely different to the first two. The body has been found on dry land in a secluded wood less than 10 miles from the center of Ipswich. But it's the way the body's been left that disturbs Stuart Gull. She was naked, she'd been posed, and the offender had clearly taken some time to uh, lay her out. The killer has arranged the body in the shape of a cross. She was pristine. She looked like an angel. Distinctive tattoos on the body establish the identity of the third murdered woman as mother of one, 24-year-old Annalie Alderton. No one had reported her missing. Like the other victims, Annalie had also been working as a prostitute to pay for drugs. David Stagg knows, with a body on land, that this is the first real chance to recover clues to the killer's identity. The body of Annalee Alderton was deposited on dry land. That in itself was actually, from a forensic point of view, a breakthrough for us, because the potential for harvesting forensic evidence, not just from the body, but from the scene of the deposition, was much greater. The pathologist is able to determine the cause of death as airway obstruction. Strangulation is a peculiarly intimate form of murder. The killer is expressing through that method of murder the ultimate form of power and control over the life of another individual. The examination also reveals another tragic aspect to the murder. Annalie was three months pregnant. The revelation changes everything for crime reporter Josh Warwick. I think when it 
It merged that Anne Lee was pregnant. It brought a different dimension to reporting of the case and people's attitude. It brought a very, a very human and raw feel to the story all of a sudden. Breakthroughs still prove elusive. A witness reports seeing Annalie boarding a train exactly one week before her body was found. CCTV cameras on the train caught her as she made the journey. But no further information turns up. With the discovery of three murder victims in less than a week, all with such similar backgrounds, Criminologist David Wilson has little doubt about the type of murderer the police are chasing. When the third body turned up, I think I was the first person to say there is a serial killer on the loose in Ipswich. And I think those words I chose with a great deal of care because they were, as far as I was concerned, accurate and they also should have suggested, which I think they did, the gravity of the circumstances. The grisly discovery of three bodies brings the world's media to Ipswich. What happened almost overnight as this crisis was developing was that the streets became filled only with one group of people, and that group of people was journalists. Um, journalists seemed to be bumping into each other, desperately hoping to find a prostitute that they could interview. Despite the fact that a killer seems to be targeting prostitutes, most of the girls continued to work the streets as usual. We were all worried and obviously scared, but we all had to go to work anyway. You know, we, we had drug addictions, we had addictions to feed. The police put out a clear warning, telling the girls to get off the streets. But the warnings are ignored. Go. Two more girls have been reported missing. Annette Nichols. Say again? Paula Clennell. The newly reported missing women are identified as mother of three, Paula Clennell, whom the police had questioned earlier about the disappearances, and 29-year-old Annette Nichols. Annette's disappearance hits Jade Reynolds hard. She was my best friend. Really, yeah, the most amazing person I've ever met in my life. You know, she, oh, she changed my life for the better. Just six days before she'd gone missing, Paula Clannell had been interviewed by a local TV crew. Why, why well, have you decided to come out tonight? Because I need the money. I need the money, you know? Despite the dangers? Well... That has made me a bit wary about getting into cars, you know. But presumably you, you will do that tonight? Well, probably. Following the two new disappearances, the police organise a press conference. Reporter Josh Warwick is stunned by the turn of events. The shock and the, uh, the amazement of, of everybody, certainly ourselves, when uh, we were told that these are two other women that had been reported missing, both prostitutes, both drug addicts, was, uh, it was unbelievable, really. You know, it was just incredible. Less than 24 hours after the press conference, more news. Go, they found another body. Where? In the woods close to where Anne Lee Alderson's body was found. We're already sort of still reel, reeling from the discovery of uh, Annalee Alderton on the Sunday. Get as many people out there as possible. I want the crime scene locked down and preserved. On our way. I was still surprised, shocked, uh, dismayed, and of course realised um, the severity and the magnitude of what we, what we were now dealing with. Even though police arrive at the scene within minutes of the reported sighting of a body, cameras are there to meet them. 
I will, I will need you at some point to go, all right? No problem at all.